Yeah, what's going on, guys? I'm Pinsetter1991, or Andrew Sanders. And if you've seen my How to Draw a Beach Sky movie that I uploaded years ago, you may recognize what I'm doing here. I've just got a piece of compressed charcoal. This is a General's brand compressed charcoal. It's the really, really dark stuff. And I'm using a separate sheet of paper. You just start. Um, putting a thick layer down onto the page and you grab a piece of tissue, toilet paper, paper towel, whatever you want to use and you start smearing it onto the paper and this is what you're going to do to create the sky this will get you a really smooth even value for the night sky you could use, use this for a day sky too just don't make it as dark. So pretty straightforward. That's what I'm doing right here. And um, you can see that I've made a line on the bottom, like third of the paper, going straight across. That's where the ocean is going to be. So I don't want to blend that. So I'm going to avoid that. I made kind of a box for where the light or the uh, lifeguard tower is going to be and you can also see over on the left there's kind of an outline of the lighthouse just like basic shapes I didn't go into any detail but I know that there's going to be a lighthouse there so I'm avoiding blending it in too much but it's pretty easy there's really no special techniques. You can see I mainly use circular motion because I'm trying to blend this into the page and the sky is completely flawless so you want it to be a really smooth transition from darker to lighter like where I'm at right now that's where the moon is gonna be <clears throat> so I'm trying not to make it too dark right in there at the bottom but up here at the top you can make it as dark as you can or as dark as you want so all I'm doing now is I have the Faber-Castell eraser pencil and I'm erasing away uh, the shape of the lighthouse cleaning it up if you don't have one of these Faber-Castells then just use a regular eraser but get one of these if you can because they're really awesome you can actually sharpen them just like a regular pencil it's actually kinda hard to use a a pencil sharpener on them but I usually use an exacto knife but you can get really fine details with it you can see I'm using the brush to brush away the the rubber shavings that were left behind that's something that you can use the brush for a lot really comes in handy you should probably avoid using your fingers or your hand to brush away the shavings but you can see I do it <laughs> I do it anyways but I always wash my hands really well before I work with charcoal if you don't wash your hands then you're gonna leave fingerprints on the uh, on the drawing but I don't know there's something that I like about using my fingers in my drawing you know you feel like more of a connection with the drawing I've had people comment that before too. this one comment that <laughs> said the same thing he likes to use his fingers while while drawing so now I'm going back in with more charcoal want to make the sky as dark as I can And you'll have to repeat the process quite a few times depending on how dark you want the sky. Got to grab your charcoal, blend it on there, and then grab your tissue paper. I found that toilet paper usually works the, the best. It's kind of weird. You wouldn't expect to use toilet paper, but it's like tissue paper is too soft and second best thing to use would probably be a paper towel 
but it's almost like not soft enough sometimes and so it doesn't blend it very evenly but the toilet paper works really really well for for blending especially the sky it's funny because I have all these materials to use I've seen like deer skin chamois and you know like blending stumps and tortillions and all this stuff and I use toilet paper <laughs> In almost all of my drawings, I end up using toilet paper because of how smooth it blends. I'm starting to figure out where I want the clouds to be. Again, you should have clean fingers if you're going to be touching the page. <laughs> but you can see I'm lifting the charcoal off the page. This is just to give myself an idea of where I want these clouds to be. I go in with a piece of toilet paper just to add some more highlights. You can see I'm not like erasing anything away right now. I'm not doing anything major, but I am kind of giving myself an idea of where I want the clouds to be. So now I'm using a kneaded eraser you should definitely get yourself one of these if you don't have one. I'm just using a tiny little piece of it, but um, you can actually form it to whatever shape you want and you can add in the highlights. Main thing to keep in mind is that the moon is down. Well, I guess it depends on how you want to draw it, but in this case, the moon is down, uh, you know, at the bottom of the, the sky so it's going to be shining up onto the bottoms of the clouds so you want to make the bottoms of the clouds lighter than the tops just to give it the effect that you know moonlight is shining up underneath them and it's so easy with the kneaded eraser just practice for a few minutes and you'll be able to make clouds really, really fast. I mean, look how fast I've made these clouds. It's taken me like three minutes. Go in and take out the basic shape of the cloud and then go back and add more highlights. And if you want, you can add more shadows to the tops of the clouds. You can go back in with charcoal or with a tortillion. That's what I'm going to do a little bit later. I go back with the toilet paper and add some some darkness to the tops of the clouds but that's up to you go back in and darken it a little bit just the same process as before avoid the clouds it's up to you if you want to do this but it does kind of you know you can kind of kill two birds with one stone doing this because you can add shadows to the tops of the clouds as you're making the sky darker. I use this brush throughout the video just kind of blending everything together it's fantastic this brush really smooth it just works great for blending that's the Habico is the brand that makes it German brand it's called the Duo Pastello if you find one of those I strongly suggest getting it otherwise steal one from your sister's makeup kit <laughs> just kidding you probably shouldn't do that this is a can of compressed air I'm gonna do a really high-tech complicated move here I'm gonna use it to make a circle <laughs> you don't have to use a can of compressed air to do this 
but we are going to use that kind of compressed air later. It just happened to be there, so I used it. This is going to be our moon. Pretty easy way to make a circle, right? Now you're going to remove all the charcoal that's in the moon. Make it completely white. And I'm using the uh, compre or the uh, kneaded eraser. And the one downfall of the kneaded eraser is it's hard to get fine lines and details in with it. It's great for clouds and gradually lightening areas, but for making abrupt changes in light and dark, it doesn't work so well. So I use it through, you know, most of this moon, but once I get to the edge, I'm going to switch over to the Faber-Castell eraser pencil and get the very edge with with that. So the next step, I'm using a piece of the nitrum charcoal. I think it's an HB is the number on that. It wasn't too hard, not too soft. Um, basically what you're going to do is look up a picture of the moon. This will really help you. This is what I did. Off to the side of the drawing, I think I had my my laptop or an iPad or something with a picture of the moon on it just to give myself a reference but the moon basically has lots of shadows and craters <laughs> you think about it there's millions of craters all over the moon so it makes a lot of shadow and that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now just kinda of using circular motions you're really not going into a lot of detail right now what I'm gonna do in a few minutes is just kinda of blend it all together with the brush so don't worry about going into too much detail but instead of looking at each individual crater and shadow of the moon kinda of squint your eyes and look at the darks and lights and that's what you're trying to draw <clears throat> is just the values so that's all I'm doing right now pretty basic and you can see I switch over to the brush, start blending it together. And you can probably do this a few times until you get it to where you like it. And the next thing we're going to use is the white charcoal. This is the General's white charcoal. You can see how long I've made the tip of it because Charcoal is just a pain to sharpen, <laughs> like especially the General's pencils. They break all the time, so you're best off using a an X-Acto knife and a pad of sandpaper. You don't even have to get like a professional artist pad of sandpaper. Just go to the hardware store, cheaper. But I'll show a little bit later how to sharpen the pencil and use that sandpaper to get a, a sharp point out of it but right now all I'm doing is kind of giving more definition to the craters that are on the moon so now I am going into more detail kind of paying close attention looking back at my reference image make sure I get it the way I want it but you think about it like inside the crater is dark around the edges it's lighter there's highlights so that's what I'm doing and around the edge of the moon I make it lighter
Now I do something kind of interesting. I grab some of my Spanish homework paper, rip it in half, <laughs> and I'm going to use this to make a, a few highlights, kind of like light beams. This is completely optional, but I like the effect that it gives. Put the two pieces of paper, leave a small space between them, then use your kneaded eraser to make a line. And I do this three times. Just make three little beams coming off the moon. I think it gives it a cool effect. Kind of like mystical. In real life, you usually wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think you would see this. Unless it was like a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse. Um, but I think it looks neat. Then I use the kneaded eraser to highlight it. But later on, I'm going to use that compressed air to do this. I'll show you that. My great discovery. See, this is the cool thing about this brush, the Habaco Duo Pastello. It's that it's got two ends. You can use one for general blending and the other for finer blending. So now we're going to add some stars. I'm using the General's white charcoal pencil. This is super complicated. You're making little dots. <laughs> I hope you guys note my star sarcasm. This is really easy. <laughs> Just go through, make little dots. You don't even have to like take your time. I start speeding up. But as I do them, I try to make some of them darker. Well some of them lighter than others this could indicate that they're closer or brighter or maybe they're planets but you can go through and do this as many times as you want You see, this is the reason that I don't have background noise uh, playing, because the entire time that I draw, and this is probably one of the most important things about making a good drawing, is you got to be relaxed, and music relaxes me, so I listen to music the whole time. Uh, unfortunately, YouTube gets mad if you use copyright music, so I need to mute it, but I figured I'd show that little clip so that you guys could see why it's muted. Um, but I'm starting on the lighthouse now, little top kind of looks like a, I don't know, a button or something. <laughs> it's pretty easy. I'm using the General's Charcoal HB, really sharp fine details then underneath that make a line keep the pencil really sharp and look up some reference images for lighthouses too I was looking at a bunch of them so that I could do this right I'd never drawn a lighthouse before now here's another use for your math or Spanish homework. Grab it, line it up, and use your tissue to darken the edge right there. Looks pretty good, huh? Now what I do next is I take a tortillon or blending stump, and I use that charcoal that we have on the other sheet of paper. And we're going to use that to 
shade in the side of the lighthouse. So you take that tortillion and just start shading it in. Obviously over on the left side because the moon is on the right. I use this a lot, this technique, taking the charcoal off of another piece of paper and then blending it on, especially with clothing. It looks great. You can see the use of your homework has no bounds. <laughs> Lay it down on top of the paper where you're going to rest your hands so that you don't mess up what you've drawn underneath it. I've seen some artists that get like special gloves and stuff like that that they wear while they draw but yeah whatever just use a piece of paper now there's like a rail going around the top of the lighthouse so I put that in there and this is where I made my amazing discovery there were some shavings up in there that I wanted to get off so I started blowing on it with the compressed air and I realized that it made this really cool highlight so I start using the compressed air. Of course, there's no audio. You can't really hear it, but start making some highlights. This was totally by accident at first. I said, hey, that looks really cool. So you just kind of aim it, make a couple beams coming out. And I decided, why stop there? So I made a few highlights on the moon and the clouds. Why not? It's pretty cool. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. It's getting pretty long. Uh, I'm going to make the next part very soon, showing you how to draw the rest. But I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I try to make as many videos as I can. About once a week is what I'm trying to do. But uh, thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Thanks for leaving comments. And be sure to ask me any questions down below. I'll try and respond as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Take care. Good luck.